Hey, my name is Tan Zhao. I'm a applied research scientist from NVIDIA. In the next few minutes, I'll show you a demo on how to use the open source federated learning platform NVFLAIR as a beginner. NVFLAIR is a federated learning platform that can be used both in research and in real world deployment. It is open source and can be easily installed by pip install, like this. To help you quickly get familiar with the usage of NVFLAIR, we provide a few examples for you to have a try. Let's first clone the Git repository of NVFLAIR to get the code of the examples. In this demo, we demonstrate the CIFAR10 classification example. Let's go to take a look. In the readme of the CIFAR10 example, we see that it first creates a virtual environment. It is optional, but let's follow it. Here we use a slightly different way to initialize the virtual environment. Then we need to install the packages. Now, let's start the federated learning system. To deploy your code in an FL system, we first need to start it. An FL system has several participants. It has a server that handles the global model, multiple clients to train the local models, and an admin to control the process. In order to share the models between the server and the clients, we need to build connections among these participants. This is done by our NVFLAIR FL system. It is irrelevant to the task. No matter it is classification, segmentation, or reconstruction, no matter it uses PyTorch, TensorFlow, or NumPy, no matter it is deep learning or traditional machine learning, our NVFLAIR FL system can provide a solution for secure deployment of FL in real-world scenarios using SSL-certificated communication channels. To make it easier for the developers, NVFLAIR provides two modes of the FL system, the secure mode, which is the one we use in the real-world scenario, and the POC mode, proof of concept, in order to debug our code. When you develop your FL project, we recommend first testing your code in POC mode and then deploying it in the secure mode. Let's first work with the POC mode. Here, we are simulating an FL system with 8 clients, so we run this command. Let's dive into the generated POC workspace and see how it looks like. We can see that there is an admin, a server, and 8 clients from site 1 to site 8. Let's start the FL system. Now, the FL system has started. We can start training the CIFAR10 classification models. By the way, we need the CIFAR10 dataset to be downloaded, so let's run this command. Next, we will start training. This is done by submitting a training job to the server and clients. Let's first look at the centralized training which means training on one client only. Remember, we need to append POC to the command. We can see that the training started. So what did it do? How can you control the training settings? 
like the network architecture, the optimizer, data preprocessing, and so on. Let's dive into the config files. You can find the information there. Let's first look at the meta information of this job. It shows that there is only one client, Site1, doing training here, and it uses one GPU. The model sharing is between the server and Site1. Let's look at other config files. Config fed server contains important information like the number of aggregation rounds and the network architecture. Let's look at the number of rounds, which is equal to 1 here. This is centralized training, so the server accepts the local model from Site 1 only after the whole training process is finished. In other words, it only accepts the model once. That's why the number of rounds is 1. We can also see the information about the network architecture here. It's in a component called Persister. This model is customized for the Sivartan experiment. We defined a network called Moderate CNN. When you are defining your own project, you can use whatever network you like, no matter if it's UNet, ResNet, Transformer, and so on. Config fed client, on the other hand, contains information about local training. Let's look at the component called Cipher 10 Learner. This is a customized script. Aggregation epochs equals to 25, meaning that the client submits the local model to the server every 25 epochs. The learning rate is 0 0.01 and it is centralized training. In the configuration files, we mentioned that there are a few customized scripts. How do they look like? How to write your own customized scripts? Let's look at the network as an example. We can see that they are pretty standard PyTorch networks. You can easily substitute them with your own network. The training is still ongoing, but I'd like to introduce how to stop it. Previously, we mentioned that there is an admin account that controls the FL system. Here is how to use admin account to stop the ongoing job. Here I open a new terminal which simulates the admin account. We first cd into the workspace. And again, I initialize the virtual environment. Next, let's cd into the admin workspace and run the admin console. The commands of the admin console can be found in the documentation of Envyflare. To stop the ongoing job, let's run the command abort job. The job ID can be found in the server workspace or any client workspace. Then press enter, the job will be stopped. Let's check the status of the clients. There is no job running now. Next, we will try Fed Average, which is one of the most popular federated learning algorithms used in practice. And we will run this federated learning experiment on 8 clients. Let's check the status of the clients again. They all have jobs started. In this demo, we have demonstrated how to start an FL system, how to submit a job, how to stop a job, how to read the configuration files, and how to read the customized scripts. Thank you for watching, and good luck with your first federated learning project with Envyflare.